Today, in the early 2020s, it's almost impossible to imagine a world where computers aren't everywhere. We have home computers, laptops, tablets, smartphones, and the cloud. And work and school often revolve around the use of computing technology. But even the idea of computers is really only a couple hundred years old. Primitive precursors to modern computer science appeared in the 1800s, including Charles Babbage's attempt at designing and building a difference engine, and Ada Lovelace's development of the first algorithm to be processed by a machine. And it wasn't until World War II that actual functioning computers first came to be. By the 1950s, computers were officially on the market, though they were large, expensive, and didn't have nearly the computation power of today's machines. The 1970s saw some of the earliest personal computers, and the early 90s brought us the World Wide Web and an explosion of information. Now, in 2022, We've got supercomputers, artificial intelligence, and so much other stuff that used to just exist in science fiction. Which might make you wonder how much we really know about these devices that fill our lives. Like how computers actually work, how new programs are created, or if there are any problems computers can't solve. Which brings me to the absolute importance of computer science. Thanks to all this computing, there's a demand for individuals who understand how computers work, including their mathematical underpinnings, how to program them, solve problems with them, protect them, or even figure out how complex or efficient some computer problems are. Hi, I'm Naya Butler-Craig, and welcome to Fast Guides, a study hall series presented in partnership with Arizona State University and Crash Course. In this episode, we're exploring the ins and outs of majoring in computer science. Computer science is the study of computer systems, including computation, automation, algorithms, intelligence, hardware, software, and programming. It covers both theoretical and applied topics. The theoretical end of the spectrum focuses on the theory of computation, information theory, data structures, algorithm efficiency, and programming language theory. So basically, how computers work and store information in theory, and how we can change that in the future. And the more applied end of the spectrum uses computer science to solve everyday problems by creating programs, developing software, and working on issues related to human-computer interactions. And somewhere in between are a lot of the hottest fields and biggest problems of the early 21st century, like artificial intelligence, computer architecture and networks, security and cryptography, databases, and graphics and sound processing. So computer science is so much more than knowing how to code. And there are so many reasons to choose this as a major. Computers are everywhere, and technology is constantly evolving. This means there's a demand for people who know how to handle computational systems and who can advance the field. Not only that, but by studying computer science, you'll develop problem solving and critical thinking skills. You'll be able to analyze complex scenarios and become proficient at programming. These are great skills to have in your everyday life that also make you valuable in the eyes of employers. Those who aim high in this field will find career opportunities that can provide financial stability and provide them with a strong degree of personal and professional success. So let's get started. Computer science relies on a lot of mathematics and programming, and this is definitely reflected in the courses you'll take. To learn more about how things like information can be turned into numbers, how data can be manipulated, and logic, it's typical to take courses on things like discrete mathematics, linear algebra, and a full calculus sequence, including integral calculus and differential equations. Math and computer science also overlap a lot, so mathematical problem-solving techniques will also show up in your specific computer science major classes, including things like the fundamentals of digital design, probability and statistics, algorithms and logic, and more. Natural science courses like physics or chemistry are also often required as they help reinforce scientific thinking. You may also take composition or communications courses, which will help you not just tackle problems, but communicate the solutions and why they're important, depending on your school and program. But that's just the beginning. From there, you can take a range of courses on the theoretical to applied spectrum, like digital design fundamentals, cloud computing, or computing ethics and society. We like to think of scientific and math fields as being hard or being based solely on logic or facts, but programs and algorithms are designed by people, and the choices we make influence what those algorithms decide or produce. Depending on your program, you may also have the option to specialize in areas like database management, network administration, software development, cybersecurity, 
artificial intelligence, or even bioinformatics and game design. And because computer science is such a broad field, it's a good idea to check out what specializations are offered when you're choosing your major or college to make sure it aligns with your interests. And then like so many majors, Toward the end of your studies, you'll likely complete large projects or capstone research, which offer opportunities to apply what you've been learning. Or you might look for an internship at some point during or after your studies through an organization like the Multiple Engineering Cooperative Program, which can place you with some of the leading technology companies like Intel Corporation or Siemens. Internships are a great way to gain work experience and make connections with professionals in the field before graduation. Now, an argument could be made that everyone who attends college should take at least some computer science courses, just like they take English 101 or some sort of math class, because nearly every job these days, not to mention every college class, involves the use of computers. So learning more about computers and programming is unlikely to be a waste of time for anyone. But if you're the sort of person who wants to dig deeper and really learn the ins and outs of the machines, networks, and systems that have caused massive global change in recent decades, then you might consider computer science as your major. But it's important to know that computer science is a technically complex subject that requires advanced quantitative skills and attention to detail. You might enjoy coding, but not love writing proofs and studying theory. And that's okay. There are lots of ways to study computer science and none are fancier or more prestigious than any other. It's also worth noting that there's a significant gender disparity in this field with over 80% of recent graduates in computer and information science being male. And I'm not gonna lie, it can be hard to be a woman or other minority in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics and be the only one who looks like you in the room. But we do belong here, and there's growing recognition of women and non-binary folks within STEM fields. Many colleges and industry organizations recognize the lack of gender, racial, and other diversities in computer science and STEM, and provide resources that can help you enter and find support in these fields. In fact, anyone majoring in computer science would do well to build a support system. Make a habit of forming study groups, visiting office hours and engaging with professionals and students alike outside of class time in order to learn as much as you can and manage the difficult workload. But just like any major, you might start down the computer science path and discover it isn't right for you. And that's okay. Many of the classes you will have already completed may count towards a degree in mathematics, physics, engineering, data science, or even philosophy. And you'll better understand our current world of computers and all they can do. Once you earn your bachelor's degree in computer science, a multitude of job opportunities open up to you. However, you can also choose to continue your studies before pursuing a career. By earning a master's degree in computer science or a related field, you may stand out above other job candidates and command a higher starting salary. You can also use your master's studies to focus on gaining more specialized knowledge. If you think you may wanna work in very advanced research and development or teach at a university, then you can look into PhD programs. Employment opportunities in the computer science sector are projected to grow 15% from 2019 to 2029. The biggest demand will come from cloud computing, which is on-demand access to computing resources like data storage, and information security. Now talking about salaries is hard because so much can change year to year or depending on what location you're in. But the median annual earnings in the computer science field as a whole was around $91,000 as of May 2020, which is significantly higher than most other fields. Though when looking for jobs, computer scientists might not be the title you look for. Instead, you might become a computer network architect who designs and builds data communication networks. This includes things like local area networks, wide area networks, and software-defined wide area networks. Median earners in this field make over $116,000 a year. Or you might go on to become a computer programmer responsible for writing and testing code for applications and software. The median salary for programmers is about $89,000 per year. Those who go into web development and design earn around $77,000 per year. These individuals create and maintain websites, making this a great career choice for computer science graduates who also have a creative side. If overseeing networks and handling their day-to-day -day operations is more your thing, then consider a career as a network or systems administrator. Administrators are responsible for installing hardware and software, handling upgrades and repairs, maintaining security, optimizing network performance, and solving problems as they arise. The median salary for network administrators is approximately $85,000 per year. If you want to enter into one of the fastest growing segments for computer scientists, information security is a good place 
place to look. From 2020 to 2030, this field is expected to grow by a whopping 33%. Information security analysts are responsible for keeping networks secure from a whole host of ever-growing and evolving threats, including phishing attacks, malware, and ransomware. This career pays well too, with a median salary over $103,000 per year. Another closely related career is that of data architect. Data architects create and organize systems to store data and earn about $122,000 per year. So while majoring in computer science may be challenging, it opens the door to a whole host of opportunities. As a field that's in demand and expected to be around for quite some time, it's an excellent choice for anyone who loves working with computers and technology. Thanks for watching. If you want to investigate more degrees before you choose, like we all should, check out our other videos to look into more majors to find the one that's right for you. This series is part of the Study Hall program, a partnership between Arizona State University and Crash Course. If you liked this video or found it helpful, give it a like and comment and let us know how you chose your degree or how you're struggling to choose a degree or what you wish you'd known before you started your degree.